Hello everyone and in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to build our own custom volume shader in Karma. Okay, so uh, the previous lesson we saw how to make like a cloud shader but that was done using like the standard sort of ready-made Karma pyro shader that is built into Karma. Okay, uh, so if you create like a cloud material or you know any of them like if you type in Karma and you'll see like you have like a cloud material, a pyro explosion. So all of these are technically the same shader with just different values applied to it. Okay, so they're just presets. So if I take the Karma pyro smoke material, it takes a few seconds to create. Okay, like the, the bigger ones take longer. Like if I take the cloud shader, it will take, you know, a fair bit of time to cook. See, so that's this one because this, there are no values applied into it, it goes faster. The cloud material takes almost like 10-15 seconds to make, okay. And if you take the pyro shader that takes even longer. But they both sort of, see, they both have the same thing. This has a pyro shader in here and this also has a pyro shader in here. The reason why it takes long is because the pyro shader is actually like a pretty massive digital asset. Okay, like it's actually digital assets inside digital assets. Like if you come in here to the pyro smoke, you'll see like this is further on a digital asset. But what it's doing is that like all of it eventually plugs into this node called Karma Volume. Okay, so this is your base volume node. Okay, so you can use this and make your own custom volume shader. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what I have is, I'm gonna get rid of this. And inside this, uh, like I took like the basic smoke shader, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get rid of this and I'm gonna type in volume and you'll get something called Karma Volume. So we'll just take this and plug it in here. Okay, now, uh, if we look at my node tree, so this is pretty simple, like I have assigned the material already and I just have a dome light which has an HDR in it, like you can see that over, over here. And I have like Karma XP, like that's pretty much it. Okay, so if, uh, if I hit a render right now, okay, I just turned on CPU, but it doesn't matter, like nothing will show up. Like even if I go to XPU, like nothing is gonna show up. So the reason for that is, I'm gonna just hide this. Okay, so the reason for that is that the default uh, shader doesn't really have any uh, sort of attributes to work on. Okay, so the, the pyro shader being like this big digital asset, it, it's automatically bringing in like density and temperature and all of those things. This one is not bringing in anything. Like you have these absorption and scattering values, but they need you need to connect your density into it to start working, okay? So the way you do that is you take a geometry property value and we'll just, let's call this density. Okay, so we'll give it a name, we'll call it density. And uh, we'll just connect it into a power node so we can sort of, you know, adjust the density value and then uh, we're going to need to control, like for it to start working, you need at least two things. You need the absorption and you need the scattering. Okay, so let me just, I'll just change this to a light color. And what you can do is we can start off with like a constant value. So this will be a color. Uh, where's color? Somewhere. Yeah, there you go, color. And we multiply it. Like if I just plug this directly like nothing is going to happen okay but if i just let's say if i multiply it with the density okay and plug that in and you will start seeing something yeah so now just take this and let's make it one and see what we get there you go okay so we start seeing something let's set it to karma xpu and we'll start seeing yeah there you go so when it's black you don't see anything you know like it just disappears so it basically just gets fainter and fainter and just disappears. But you can't see any color. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to duplicate this. Do control C, control V. And this goes into my scattering. And now we start seeing our cloud. So with these two basic nodes, you can start working. Okay, so like if I take this and I give it some color, so that becomes the color of my cloud. Like here, like controlling this sort of like goes in the opposite direction. Like if I make this red, it goes like, you know, a complementary or a sort of like a reverse color. But there you go, see, so, you know, don't do this. It just makes it faint. Like the darker you get, the fainter it gets, which is actually not bad. If you want to create like a really faint cloud, you can actually do that with this. Okay, but what you can also do is we can also just start to give it uh, like some colors. Like if I, if I take this, let's say if I 
if I take a ramp, so if I type in ramp, I can get a karma ramp. This is default set to vector, which is what we want. And what I can do is, uh, let's do one thing. Let's just do like two separate over here. Like, you know, one goes into this and one goes into that. You can also see what these guys do before we connect the ramp. Like if I take the, the power node and I lower it or increase it, so you'll start seeing like, you know, it gets more, you know, denser or lighter or brighter. Like, and with the absorption, like if you lower it, so you'll start to see like it gets, if you go zero, it just, you get this, which is not a good idea. But like, see, if you get, you know, higher, then it gets much more darker. Like it's absorbing more and more light. So you can sort of adjust and play around with these things. Okay. Scattering is nice. We can sort of, you can make the cloud brighter and also like dense at the same time. So you can sort of just play around with these things and get, you know, like different results. So if I just set it, set this to red and if I increase it, see, so you'll get, you know, you'll see, you can see what the result is. Okay. So what I can do is let's plug, uh, the power in here. Like, let's take another one. So we'll keep this one to, to one. I'll plug this in and plug that in over there. Every single thing you connect, it has to compile, which is the big irritation with Karma right now. Okay, I hope that gets faster. So now if let's say I set this to something, let's say if we set it to like uh, two tone. Okay, see, so you can actually like start seeing colors in here and let's get rid of that. And I can just, you know, like open it up a bit. Let's get rid of this as well. Okay, now what you can do is you can take this and we can also do like a remap. So I can take a material X remap in here and drop that in. And then I can take this and start to sort of like, if we adjust the values, you'll see like the, all the colors sort of showing up. So you're adjusting like the density range to define like, you know, how much, how many colors should start showing up and we can start to adjust this. See, so you get like some, you, you can actually get some really nice results. And then if you come into the volume shader and let's say if I take the, I'll get the modifier start level to zero. Okay. I can take the contribution modifier and get it higher. So it becomes brighter. And we can also take the exist, the extinction modifier and get it brighter. So you can actually create some nice results. I'll make the background dark. It looks better when it's dark. There you go. See, so you get some pretty nice results overall. And then you can give it like some anisotropy if you want. We can get the... You can get the dome light to spin and put it from behind. See, there you go. Okay. Like, let me just make it slightly brighter. Yeah. So you can actually do some really fancy stuff with this. So you can, you can make like nebulas with this if you want to, you know, you can do like a whole range of stuff with this. Okay. We don't want the, the anisotropy at the moment. So I'll just keep it to zero. And I'm also going to take the light and bring it back towards the front. Okay. So that's as far as like, you know, so this is pretty basic. Like you don't need to do, you know, much with this, but you can get some nice, you know, results with the whole thing. Now, uh, let's say if you want to do it with an explosion, like if you have like, because there's no fire inside this. Okay. So let's say if you have an explosion and you want to work with that. So I have, uh, I sort of built like a simple explosion. So let me just take a look at that. Let me just skip this to Houdini. Like see, so they have like a, it's fairly low res. You'll start seeing a lot of blocking, you know, like a lot of voxels in there because it's not very high res. But uh, let's say if we, if we assign to this, okay. So I can just take this, I can replace and bring it in here. And let's switch to XPU. And if we start to go higher, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's not working because I'm on the wrong node tree. There you go. Okay, see, so you, can, you can actually see the voxels because it's like, it's, as I said, it's like pretty low res. But as you sort of go higher, you'll start seeing the color showing up. Like as the density starts to get lower, you know, like more and more colors start to mix in. So it actually looks pretty nice. Okay. Okay. So now let's uh, come in here and we can bring in the, uh, we can, we can start affecting the emission. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to duplicate the density node, you know, my geometry property value. Let's call it. So we have two things. We have flame and we have temperature. Okay, so I can just take flame and I can take uh, yeah, temperature and what you can do is we can just take the same thing. So I can just take the multiply node and we can take a constant value or let's take a ramp. So we'll take a ramp. So we'll take ramp constant, uh, plug this in here 
and we can take a power node plug both of these in here and then we'll take another multiply and this will just be my uh, this will be for intensity okay so we'll just call it intensity okay and this plugs into the emission so let's see what we get so I can plug this in here and there you go you can start seeing you know the smoke lighting up yeah now one of the things I noticed was that if you just connect the flame as it is uh, it, you get a lot of blocking but if you multiply it with the density then it seems to be fine so if I take a multiply here and I multiply this with the density then you can see like the you know the flame sort of the area gets controlled otherwise you see like a lot of like you know voxels on the outside so you can just kind of you know multiply those two and it kind of works out better uh, and the only thing I'll do here is I'm going to take a constant and plug that in yeah see so I can like you know control how much I want okay and then here you can give it some color so let's just say if I make it uh, green so if I go higher you can see there you go and let me also like I'm going to remove this bring it in over there so if you increase the power here you can actually like control how much area lights up like if it's very low like everything lights up and if you increase the power you can sort of control you know where you have the fire so let me just change this to something better okay let's do that and I'll take the intensity higher yeah so there you go so this is how you can sort of you know bring in and you can also like you don't need to use the flame you can also use like the temperature like maybe if you want to run the the color ramp using the temperature node so you can do that you know so either ways is fine so let's try to bring in like another value in here yeah or see so you can actually like see a little bit of green in there along with the pink so you can do stuff like that and again you can put in like a remap in here and adjust the range yeah just see there you go you know so we can sort of adjust how much we want it so the nice thing is you do get like you know enough control to build like whatever you want just have a better looking explosion because this looks this looks like garbage but okay okay now one of the advantages of this uh, and let me just I, i'll get rid of the emission for now because this looks you know nice enough is that uh, you can also do other things like uh, let me just i'm going to bring this down here okay let me duplicate this so one of the other advantages of having like an open system like this is that you can now bring in almost any value and connect it so let's say if you if you want you can connect like a noise to your color okay so if i come in here to my ramp and let's say if i just pick up a noise so i can take a noise 3d and i can plug that into my karma there you go so you have like a noise value you can sort of adjust the amplitude there you go see but of course this is going to be static like it's just going to sort of move through it so what we can do is just for just to do something fancy is uh, so this is an explosion so it has like velocities in there okay so we can take the velocity channel and use that as position for my noise okay so what i can do is i can take another geometry property value this will be vector 3 and it will be called well now if you want to check this i can just plug it directly into my material and see so those are your velocities but what i can do is i want to use this to control my noise so i'm going to put it through a multiply so i can control the size as well and also take a constant here so i'll plug this in this let's increase this value a little bit and this comes into the position see so what you can do now is if you go a little higher you'll see a little more noise see there you go you can adjust the pivot a little yeah there you go so the advantage of this is that now the noise sort of moves along with the velocity so it gives you a much better result okay so you can sort of like the one thing you can't do with the car with karma as yet is you can't do volume displacement okay but like this kind of shading work you can do you know which isn't bad so i can just take this maybe slower oh there you go see that that looks nice 
So you can do some pretty nice fancy things with this. What you can also do is like, just as another final example, is uh, we can also use position to control it. Okay, so if I take a position, so we can take a material X position, and let's say if I just plug this in over here, temporarily, you'll see what we're getting. See, so this is what we have. But let's say if I want to control it via X position, Y position, you know, like anything like that. So I can just take, uh, if you come into material X and channel and you will find uh, separate. So we need a, uh, let's type in, we need a separate vector three. Okay, so we can take this and plug it in here. And again, I'll just plug this into the remap. Okay, so let's just take, let's take the Y axis and we'll plug it into remap. And that comes into the color and there you go. So you can sort of, you know, color it based on the Y value. Okay, you can just adjust this how much you want. Or if you want to, you know, adjust it based on X. So now you have like, it feels like it has depth to it. Okay, like if I take this and let's say if we like flip it, see, so you have like the stuff in the back is like what's happening is this, but if you look at it from a specific angle, if you look at it like head on, it looks like the closer stuff has one color and the stuff going further away has another color. So it's not a bad way to do things, you know. And you can also, like you can use these values to control like whatever, like you can control an isotropy, you can control extinction modifier, like whatever you want, you can, you know. So just to give you like one final basic example, let's say if I just, you know, bring this up. Let's say we have an isotropy. Okay, but let's say if you only want an isotropy towards the, you know, higher areas and nothing over here, then I can do that, you know, I can let's just duplicate this. I'll do like control C, control V. And I can put in a remap and plug that in and plug this into an isotropy. And so it looked terrible at the moment, but what we can do is I can get this higher. See, and then I can say, instead of going from zero to one, never go to one, like one makes it really terrible. Okay, so I can just take this and maybe bring it lower. There you go, see, so I can, uh, sorry, Y axis, not X. Yeah, there you go. So kind of just lower this a little. See, so you can sort of, you know, control how much you want. See, so we have like, if we go higher, see, so you have like, you have the uh, anisotropy towards the top and nothing at the bottom. See, so there you go. Yeah, you have, it's a little tricky to control, but you get some nice results. Like if I lower the extinction rate, yeah, there you go. So if I take my dome light and I spin it towards the back, there you go, see. And if I switch it with that, see, so you can sort of, you know, this is my final result that I'm getting with this, which is actually pretty, yeah, it looks weird, but okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So. So yeah, nothing overly crazy, but this is pretty much it. So this is how you can build your own custom volume shader. You can use this to do a, you know, n number of things. You want to do like fancier clouds or, you know, like magical explosions, or you want to do like nebulas and stuff like that. So any of those things you can just, you know, control with like a whole range of things and build your own shader. Okay, that's pretty much it.